Okay, we're going to review solving two-step equations today, and I say review because this is something that you have already learned in um, last year's math. Um, I just wanted to remind you that when we solve equations, we always do inverse operations or opposite operations. We always do inverse operations, okay? And when we look at a simple two-step equation, we're always going to cancel out the constant term first by either adding or subtracting. Remember, the constant term is the number for the term without a variable. It is just a number, okay? And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to cancel out the, num the number that's with the variable. We call that the coefficient. And we're going to do that by either multiplying or dividing. Okay? So remember our whole goal here when solving an equation is to isolate the variable or get the variable by itself. Isolate the variable. Get the variable by itself. We want to cancel out what's least attached first. This is the constant term. 9 is the constant term. So that's what we're going to cancel out first. Add or subtract. If this is plus 9, then we are going to subtract 9. Now you've seen that I've drawn a bunch of lines here. This is just to help us keep our sides of our equation separated, and to keep my steps separated, okay? It's also really helpful if you work your equations out in notebook paper and use those lines. Okay, so remember the reason we subtracted here was to make a zero pair, to cancel that out. And so now we're left with 2h equals 12. And now we need to cancel out the number with the variable, the 2. Remember, this means 2 times h. So the opposite, the inverse, is to divide by 2. That makes that 1h equals, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, okay let's look at number 2. I'm going to draw a line down through my equal sign just to help keep it separated. Remember, we want to cancel out our constant, the one that's not with the variable, first. This is plus 4, so the opposite is to subtract 4. Okay, so that cancels out. That makes a zero pair. So I'm left with g over 3 equals 9. Okay. Now we need to cancel out this 3 so that we have g by itself. This is g divided by 3. The opposite of dividing is to multiply. So that's just going to cancel it out. And I'm going to multiply by 3 on the other side. So I get g equals 27. 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, let's look at the next example. I know it bothers us sometimes when we have our equation written around like this, but I do want to show you that if you wanted to rewrite your equation, putting the equals 5 on the right-hand side, you could absolutely do that. I'm going to go ahead and work it out with it written backwards so that you can see it's still doable. So again, we want to cancel out our constant term over here where the a is. This is minus 7, so this time we're going to add 7. Okay, that cancels out. We have 12 equals 4a. Remember to bring this down. Now we need to cancel out the 4. This is 4 times a. So we're going to divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So a Okay, don't leave me yet, even if you think you've got this, because these next two are a little bit different. Okay. Again, we want to cancel out the 8. 
this is minus 8. So we're going to add 8. And that's going to leave me 1 third x equals 20. Now, 1 third x does mean 1 third times x. But there's a little, so the opposite would be to divide. Now, let's just take a little side note here. If I'm going to divide 20 divided by 1 third, remember to divide fractions, we keep change flip. We change division to multiplication, and we flip the second fraction. So really, we end up just multiplying by the reciprocal. When we divide, we are just multiplying by the reciprocal, which means the flip. Reciprocal. I can't spell. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, so we can make this easier. To cancel out this fraction, all we have to do is multiply by the reciprocal. 3 over 1, or simply 3. And that makes it a lot easier. Fractions coefficients are not difficult. And so that 20 times 3 is 60. We don't want to change one third to a decimal because one third is a repeating decimal. And so therefore that would cut if we did that, we would have to round and then our answer wouldn't be correct. Okay? I do want to note that you can type 20 divided by one third into your decimos calculator and it would work. You could get it to calculate it. So sometimes you don't even have to do the multiply by the reciprocal. <clears throat> you can just type it straight into your calculator like that. Okay, last one. What I wanted to point out on this one is what we need to cancel out first is the 13, right? So a common mistake that we make is we look at the number of the sign behind it. We need to make sure to get our inverse operation, we look at the sign in front of it. This is a positive 13. So to make 13 0, to make a 0 pair, we would have to subtract. And a common mistake would be to say we add based on this sign. Always look at what is in front of the number. What is in front of it names it. So this is negative 3d equals negative 21. One thing we're going to mess up on here is integers. So make sure you're using your calculator to help you. Type in negative 8 minus 13. Okay, and that will help us make sure we're getting it correctly. And then we're going to divide by negative 3, which would give us positive 7. Okay. Remember, you can use your calculator. So as you're working with positive and negative numbers, use that calculator to double check yourself.